Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fancy Football Scout as we look ahead to the Fancy Premier League 2023-24 season. My name is Joe and here we will focus on some price predictions ahead of the game's launch. Um, for those that haven't seen me on the Fancy Football Scout videos before or listened to me on their podcasts, um, I've been playing the game for uh, well over a decade now and uh, last season I recorded my eighth top 10k finish uh, which I was very pleased about um, but I've never won it uh, but will I next season uh, or will one of you um, well hopefully we've got some good advice for you to uh, at least get you a really good ranking or perhaps even to win the game um, to timestamp this um, it's currently mid-June the game hasn't launched yet um, so we're going to have a look at sort of potential price changes, potential price rises and potential price falls for some of the players um, who did well and less well uh, last season. Um, who will go up? Who will go down in price? Um, uh, and based on uh, those predicted prices, we'll also look at the sort of team that we can build. Um, I've got a couple of teams towards the end. We've used um, live FPLs um, uh, tools to create that. And there's the, the first team I'll show you towards the end of this video. Um, and uh, that I'll talk about on the podcast is um, what I can afford and one what I'd like to have and we'll see how over budget that is. Um, so last year there were some really um, great players, uh, the likes of Arsenal, Brighton, Manchester United in particular. Um, they, they were cheap as chips basically. Um, they were um, uh, one of the reasons why um, so many people found the game um, easy. Um, no matter where their rank was, they found it easy to construct a team. Um, but Lex next season looks to be markedly different, I think. Um, but before we do look at those prices, I've um, got a bit of a competition to tell you about. And while I do, I'll put a, I'll put a thing on the screen for a little mock-up we did at Fantasy Football Scout um, of some of the potential price rises they are. So um, hold on to your hats. Um, we have uh, Haaland at 13.5. That's probably quite a conservative estimate for his price rise, considering his uh, amazing uh, achievements. I think 50 goals or so. He scored uh, 36 in the Premier League, I think it was. Uh, but I'll, I'm sure I'll get corrected in the video there. It was a lot. Um, Reese James at 5.5 um, could be a bargain at Chelsea if he can stay fit. Uh, Kieran Trippier, one of the star defenders of the season, he's certainly looking to get a price hike. Could be 6.5, um, we we reckon. Um, but um, before we do that, we've got a bit of a competition uh, to tell you about. Um, so Fancy Football Scout regulars Top Marks and Circus Monkey have got price predictions on the brain and have put together a little pre-season competition. Um, what they've done is they've listed 20 players who are expected to rise in starting price. Um, so that's the likes of uh, perhaps Martin Odegaard at Arsenal, uh, Matoma at Brighton, uh, and those who are perhaps likely to fall, who've had an underwhelming season. And yes, we are looking at you. Spurs is uh, Hung Min Son there. Um, uh, there are others who may just stay the same. Um, all you have to do is guess the starting price for each of them. And there's a form on Fancy Football Scouts. So do go and find Fancy Football Scout. Um, there'll be a, one of the latest articles there on price predictions. You can also use the search function there just put price predictions and you'll find that article there um, it's not just a, for a bit of fun um, what we're offering is a full year fancy football scout premium membership um, to the entrant with the most correct guesses and with monthly premium memberships going to those uh, who are second and third um, it's only one entry per person and any ties will be settled by um, some randomized draws um, so get your entries in by um, uh, one minute to midnight uh, on Friday, 23rd of June. Much more me uh, details on the site. So um, do have a look at that. It's well worth getting membership as well. So um, uh, those that are familiar with a lot of our videos, uh, we do uh, various things looking at uh, underperformers, overperformers. There's the goal, Goals Imminent video and podcast I do with uh, the deputy editor here, Tom, uh, each week um, where we, we construct our own tables and that's something you can do in the members area. There's the fixture ticker uh, so you can look at, you can sort by difficulty and you can do a pl player comparison tool as well and there's the rate my team tool as well which is um, sort of estimates uh, how much your players in theory uh, will get each week. Um, so it's well worth doing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at uh, players um, from last season who towards the end of the season over over the over the whole campaign um, to look at those with, who had the most 
uh, who, who rose uh, most uh, 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 and they're, they're the sort of the most marked price hikes and also the most, most marked price falls last season. And um, what, what that does as well, it sort of shows who sort of under and overperformed according to their market value um, last season. And, and it also shows those whose prices we, we think uh, are likely to change as well. Um, so what I would do is I'll have a, I'll, I'll go through these um, sort of position by position. And as I said, towards the end, I'll show you the sort of team I can possibly get. And um, I'll show you the team that I really want. Uh, but um, if you've got any spare money, uh, I might need that. Um, so let's go first with goalkeepers. Um, so these are the ones that, that really rose in price um, last season. Um, so as you can say, by the end of the season, so obviously you go, they go up and they go down throughout the season. But this is what they sort of ended up with by the end. Um, we can see that, that Pope at Newcastle. So Newcastle now top four side. Um, they're only going to strengthen, only going to get better. Pope, um, you know, he's been such a consistent performer um, in fancy Premier League, uh, especially when he was at Burnley, with all those all those wonderful saves he was racking up and bonus points. But you know he's he's really he's really picked up um, that form at a, at a at a at a side which you know arguably a bigger side. No no disrespect to Burnley there. So Pope um, he has gone he went up by 0.4. So he started at five uh, and he ended up at 5.4. So I mean you would you would you would think given the way goalkeeper prices were last season, 5.5 would not be would not be out of the world for for um, for Pope. I th I think five would be arguably generous considering the price rise that's taken place there. Um, Raya is another one. Now he he went up point point three, so started at four point five. Brentford's goalkeeper, um, and, and that's sort of Brentford's goalkeeper because it's rumoured um, that he's going to be uh, move uh, making a move. I know that Brentford have scored another, um, have signed another goalkeeper, which we do have um, another video and uh, uh, on, and also um, you can look at the scout reports on Fantasy Football Scout. Uh, for more about that. But so Raya could be on the move. Spurs are the one. As I said, this is mid-June. So if you're watching this, you know, towards the end of June, early July, Raya's probably gone. But he's it's looking like he's going to go to a, big, a bigger side. Um, it's looking like it could be Spurs, could be the venue there. So he went up by 0.3. So he was 4.5. So it ended up at 4.8. That indicates to me that wherever he ends up, he's going to be 5 million. If he's the starting goalkeeper for a team like Spurs, uh, he's going to be five million, so there's going to be a price hike there. Um, and then you've got the, the the others are vaguely interesting here because because they 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 did go up in price, but they were also hampered perhaps by injury, um, or they might they might change uh, this season. So Leno at Fulham, um, often often neglected Fulham, but the Fulham were actually very good last season. Um, they did go up a bit. I think he's going to stay at four point five though. I think the Fulham goalkeeper four point five be a realistic price De Gea 5.1 he did actually go up so he started at 5 I don't think um, it, so there's rumours that Manchester United might sign another goalkeeper if he is number 1 um, at, at the start of the season 5.5 is not out of this out of this world but I do think he'll probably remain at 5 million because of so much speculation about his future um, and then Henson uh, uh, of Forest. Um, now he he was towards the end of the season red flagged. I'm I'm presuming that red flag is is still sort of ongoing. Um, I don't know exactly when he's going to come back, but he's worth flagging up there because he'll probably he's only gone up by point one, but I think he'll remain at four four point five because realistically, a Nottingham Forest goalkeeper is not going to command much more than four point five. So I do think he could be could be could be a shrewd option. He has been good to us fantasy managers in previous seasons, wherever he has been and whenever he plays. Um, so yeah, so something to bear in mind there. Um, let's have a look at defenders. So what we're looking at here. So I'll do the price rises first. So these are the ones that that went up in price during the season. So this gives an indication of what we can sort of expect this season here. So um, these so these are the high performing defenders and and no surprise at all Trippier is top. Um, so I mean, he he went up a million. Um, so it became evident, you know, sort of game week seven, eight last season that uh, you know, he was a must have and and he just was racking up points, assists, 
um, and uh, attacking potential bon- bonus. He was getting three bonus points every match. Just all he had to do was turn up. Um, but he's so he was getting those bonus. He was getting those uh, assists and also the clean sheets as well. Um, it did drop off. Um, so those there was. I remember we we did some videos um, last season and I, um, towards the I, mean, I was starting to say you know sort of get game week thirty ish in the last few game weeks is is Trippier worth it? Um, you know, could we be moving on? Should we perhaps go for another Newcastle defender if we wanted to tap into the defence? But they, they just weren't getting the clean sheets. Um, but, you know, he ended up, ended the season strong. Um, so he was five million. Uh, he ended up going up to six. He went up a whole million. Um, I, th- I think given that, I think 6.5 would be a very realistic price for him. So if you think you're going to get the likes of Trippier cheap, no. That's not going to happen. Um, you might get a Newcastle defender cheap, though. Cher um, is, is is the next in the list. He went up 0.6. So he was 4.5. So it, that indicates 5.1. That indicates that, that Newcastle defenders, we hope some other ones like Cher, can be 5 million, which is a bit more affordable. Not not as much as 4.5, but it's a bit more affordable um, with that 5 million price tag there. So 5.1. He ended the season with, if if the rest of them are 5.5, it's going to be very tricky and I would ignore them. Um, also, Newcastle's fixtures aren't great to start the season with. So it's quite a good sort of wait and see time. And I think I've got a sneaky suspicion Trippier is going to be very popular. Uh, a lot of people are going to see, you know, how much, many points he got last season. But as the fixtures pan out, as the clean sheets perhaps aren't there, I can see Trippier going down in price. So I wouldn't mind um, perhaps a cut price Trippier. Um, and so perhaps he might dip down, maybe back down to the 6 million. No, probably not as far as 6 million. But he'll start at 6.5 and I think you're going to get some price drops there. Um, next up, Ar- well, I mentioned share, but White at Arsenal. So it's a good chance to mention Arsenal's defence. So they, they were, um, I mean, I wouldn't use the phrase criminally underpriced, but they were welcome. In there being underpriced last season, um, but Ben White was great, four point five. Um, I had him in my team for various points in the season, uh, and he was an absolute star um, because he actually did get six. So switched to right back, getting assists as well. Um, obviously, he, he could play centre back. He can actually play in defensive midfield as well in his time with uh, you know uh, on occasions with Brighton and Leeds, his previous clubs. Uh, but anyway, he went I went up point five. I think we're going to be looking at um, some of the perhaps uh, I, I feel the nailed on Arsenal defenders could go as high as 5.5. I think five is more likely with the likes of White. Uh, Gabriel, uh, who's a very reliable centre back, I think it's possible we could be playing, looking at 5.5. there. Um, and Saliba's on this list as well, injured for a lot of towards the end of the season. Um, but he went up 0.4. He obviously, he went up further and then went back down again because of his injury. But he started at 4.5. Very, very underpriced last season. Um, once again, it's going to be it's going to be 5 million, I would say. It could be 5.5. I hope not. Um, a Stupinam, um, he went up 0.5 at Brighton. Um, assist potential, goal scoring potential, bonus potential if he gets those things and obviously clean sheets. Um, although Brighton are quite, very, a bit more focused on attacking and they might not get the clean sheets. But nevertheless, he went up 0.5, ended the season at 5 million. Um, I've seen some people speculating he could go up to 5.5 and that's something that could happen. Brighton, Brighton's defence could go up um, sort of across the board from 4.5 to 5 and there could be one that's sort of seen as an exception by fancy Premier League Towers. There. And a stupid and could be that one at 5.5. Um, so we mentioned Saliba as well. And then next up, we've got Brentford. We've got me there. So you can also put, say, uh, Henry there into that category. So the Brentford defence. Brentford have a quite a good start to the season, actually. Um, so there's no Tony. Um, so, um, you know, there aren't sort of attacking uh, 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 players that we could be thinking of. But in terms of defence, I think they'll stay, stay at 4.5. But looking at this, 4.8, so 0.3. Uh, extra for me, I would say that um, it's a possibility you might see a burn one one Brentford defender going up to five. But I think and I hope they remain at four point five. Um, Lewis Stunk at uh, uh, Brighton started at four point five, uh, ended at four point eight, went up point point three. 
Um, I think this indicates he's going to be five million. I think Lewis Dunk, uh, because he's so nailed on, he he did actually earn another England cap, um, uh, or rather an England slot this 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 summer, um, but had to pull out by for injury. And was placed by Lever Colwell, who was who did shine at Brighton, and is now going. Uh, who's, uh, was on loan from Chelsea. Chelsea do not want to part with him. So Brighton are trying to offer him lots of money. I think he's going to stay at, at, at Chelsea, sadly, as a as a Brighton fan. Um, uh, Alexander Arnold. Now this is this is going to be, I don't know, controversial. Whatever his price is, controversial. He's too cheap. Uh, he's too expensive. Um, but. Um, he, so he started at 7.5. He ended the season at 7.8. He switched to a more midfield role. He's, uh, you know, this is this has actually helped his attacking input. So he's, whilst it might look like a defensive midfielder, it's not. It's a much more sort of attacking midfielder. He's just, he's just, he's in a position to get those assists to score as well. He's actually doing that role for England, or rather, uh, has done in the last England match um, that I saw. So. Um, Looking at that, 7.8, given his pedigree over a number of seasons and the attacking threat there, um, I think you would be looking, well, at least 7.5. It's a possibility that he could go up to 8. We've seen that before with the likes of Vidic at Manchester United uh, and famously Leighton Baines at Everton, who was an absolute star in fantasy team because he was on penalties as well penalty taking defender uh who was also on set pieces marvelous um alexander arnold's if they really want to give us something to think about eight million um 7.5 is the hope though let's hope um and then sure at uh, manchester united another another player i want to mention in terms of the sort of potential price rises um so started at five million went up to 5.3 so that there's a price hike there that indicates uh the manchester united defense probably you're going to get they did much better than their price their their market value uh predicted last season so i would say sure is going to be 5.5 5, i think <laughs> this is a prediction and um you're going to see you know the likes of you know, Wamba Saka Dalo, um, um, who are going to go up. Some of them are going to go. Some of them are going to go up to five. Some will remain at four point five. Sure, I think it's going to be the exception there. So they're going to. So FPL are going to ask a lot of questions for us there. Um, let's have a look at the defenders last season that fell in price by the end of the season. Um, now I had a look at this list here. And there was a lot of really rubbish defenders in there. But there was a lot of defenders who don't really get the minutes who'd gone down in price. So when I was sorting sorting on the FPL site in terms of price rises and price falls last season. Um, so what did stand out was the Chelsea defenders. So what I decided to do was that I just I just home in on Chelsea. So I just I just flicked it to Chelsea, ignore other teams, just Chelsea. Um, and you can see here Chalabar, he went down 0.6. Chilwell, he went down 0.4, it was 6 million, um, which indicates where some of those, perhaps Shaw could even be 6 million this season. Uh, Aspilicueta, he's gonna, his, his minutes will be greatly reduced if he's still at Chelsea. Um, he went down 0.3 and then James went down 0.2, ended the season at 5.8. So he was 6 million. So it's the two, the two names here I'm interested in are Chilwell and James. Um, uh, Chilwell and James, they, have very, they post very similar stats, very similar roles. Um, new manager at Chelsea, um, not not known. I mean, I might be corrected here in in the chat, uh, in the um, in the comments, and please do. But I don't think he's known for his wing backs too much um, there. So, but nevertheless, um, Chilwell and James as left back and right back, um, I think are potentially good options. And I think we're going to be seeing a price reduction from them. So, I mean, certainly this this price reduction by the end of the season indicates five point five. Um, I would say James with his injury record, six million. No one is going to go there. Five point five. Now you're starting to tease us. And Chilwell, I really like Chilwell. Um, I, I really, um, I owned Chilwell for a period last season. Got got um, many returns from him. Decided to drop off a bit, so so I offloaded him. But um, a, an exciting player um, at left back or left wing back. Um, I do like him. It's going to be interesting. Chelsea are going to be an interesting team. Um, because with their new manager, I mean, they've, I mean, they really underperformed. I mean, these, this is a Champions League winning squad with a, with a guy who owns it, who is 
chucking money at anyone. I mean, last season, it, I mean, all you have to do was move, and, he, he would, and this guy would buy you. So, um, they, they were the, the team brimming with talent, but arguably perhaps too much talent. It shows that you can't just buy, 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 um, like he did, uh, the, the owner did in, in, uh, in the U S with baseball. Um, it, it, it worked then, but it didn't, it, it just hasn't worked with Chelsea. You need to gel that team. Um, so perhaps this season, I think they will, they have the manager, permanent manager in place, hopefully <laughs> for the, for Chelsea fans. Um, and, and I think they're going to do much better. And, um, I think fancy managers will be very, I've got a very keen eye on Chelsea first, first couple of matches, sort of a wait and see, and then, could be time to dive in um, for the likes of Chilwell and James. Um, speaking of Chelsea, um, um, looking at the midfielders that go up in price, um, well, no Chelsea there. But when we have a look at the midfielders that fall, that's where Chelsea's going to really come into their own. So um, let's look at the, 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 this is. Um, this is sort of this is for the Chelsea owner. Um, this is what you could have had some uh, good players um, who can gel in teams. Uh, Matoma, uh, Brighton started at five million, um, which seems weird considering he was like almost hundred percent owned by engaged managers towards the end of the season. But anyway, he went up to five point seven, um, so a, yeah, big price hike there. Um, on the eye test, he looks fantastic. He did go off the boil towards the end. Um, Looking at this, this would indicate, given given that it's you know based on him, you know obviously getting getting points as well. He was quite consistent with assists, um, and he's got a you know he's got a good sharp sharp eye for goal as well. Um, Six million, I think, is going to be a pipe dream, given that they're now in year in Europe. I think what FPL might do, um, you're going to get the likes of perhaps March and Gross who might not be as popular i think they could they could be six million um i'll speak about march in a sec um i think they could go up to to six million maybe 6.5 and matoma i think they're going to ask some questions of us here and i think seven million is is likely um 6.5 would be great and uh very much keen on owning him at 6.5 7 million i'm gonna have questions to ask 7.5 i think that could be a little bit over because as much as i love my team brighton it is brighton (laughs) and and that's a lot of money 7.5 from atoma so i think i think a bit cheaper um rashford's next outstandingly underpriced last season i couldn't believe it um i mean i know he had a bad campaign the season before um but uh, yeah, so he started at 6.5, went up 0.7, so he ended at 7.2. He's going to go up in price. Um, occasionally, I've seen him on penalties, um, so could be if Bruno's not on the pitch. Um, but he'll go up. I mean, you, you, you think, you've got to think what FPL managers would have paid for him last season. I'd have happily paid, well, not happily. Well, maybe I would have paid 9 million for him last season. And I think 9 million is what he's going to end up with. I think 8.5 will possibly feel too cheap for him um but if he is 8.5 that would be great um 9 million i think for rashford um martinelli and odegaard so it's that arsenal i mean once again like rashford martinelli was 6 million so he was in my team and many many other teams um starting off and what what a return he gave us throughout the season even when trossard came in um as as a as a as a as another player for the left wing, and Marte just um, when Jesus was out, he just moved into the um, uh, uh, to, into the centre. So Martinelli was just seen as pivotal. Um, he's going to go up in price. Um, I think what you're going to be looking at there for Odegaard as well. Obviously, went up in price. Odegaard was six point five when he started, ended up at six point nine. Both of these, this is you, you're starting to look into the eight point five category here. It's possible. It's possible they could be eight, and Saka will be eight point five. Or it's possible they're eight point five. And if FPL really want to be cruel, Saka could be nine. It's because Saka's on penalties, um, and so often what they do with the pricing in FPL, um, they 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 will either do like a blanket one, so all Arsenal midfielders are the same price, but they tend to make one or two a little bit more expensive or a little bit more different just to give you, and, and so, you know, based on set pieces, in this case, penalties. So I think Saka will, will um, be higher than them, um, 8.5 to 9. So that's a big price. Uh, I hope you're all getting the gist of what this is. So everyone last season, all season we were saying, oh, 
oh, we can afford everyone. Oh, I can get. I said it as well. I didn't even didn't even look at price rise sites and things like that. I didn't need to. So I was saying, oh, I'll get those players in. Oh, I'll get that player. I can afford them. This season is going to be completely different. There's going to be price rises for all those premiums that did well. Um, and there is going to be a big price hike for these midfielders, these Arsenal midfielders, Rashford. You, you're looking at one, two million, three million in some cases. Um, you know, we haven't got we, 100 million is not going to better afford all of them. We're going to have to make choices. So next season, in terms of prices, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really tough. Um, Almiron could be a bargain, though. Um, he was a bargain at five million. He had uh, good good spells. Um, when Champions League kicked in, he might he might end up playing more domestically rather than international rather than uh, on the uh, in the Euro- European stage there. But anyway, yeah, he went up 0.4. He ended up 5.4. Um, that indicates a 5.5 is probably likely still a bargain. Uh, Rodrigo at Leeds, sadly, sadly, Leeds is not there. So um, obviously, I, I took this from the FPL website. So you're gonna you're gonna get the odd um, player that's no longer no longer with us um, in, into the uh, moved on to uh, other other lesser <laughs> leagues. Um, we've got March next at Brighton. Uh, he signed at five million, um, like with like Matoma. So they were priced the same. Um, they were pretty similar pretty similar but March then got injured um but Matoma carried on playing and didn't um didn't get up to get get the spectacular returns but March had really some really good spells there um he's not the greatest goal scorer as, as anyone who's seen his penalties in the, in uh, cup competitions last season will know but he can't he, I mean he can score and and uh, he got a brace against uh, Liverpool I seem to remember last season um, but he is good for assists. He's very regular, very relied on. Uh, De Zerbi, the manager at Brighton, really, really rates him. Um, he's going to go up in price. Um, this would indicate 5.5. It would be sort of market value. I think 6 million. I think we're going to see 6 million for March. I think we're going to see Matoma at 6.5, 7 million. Um, and I think that's going to be the... Uh, so that probably might sway me more to March than Matoma. Um, Because I do think they're quite similar as FPL assets. Um, Next we've got Zaha. He's getting older. Palace have relied on him, but they're relying on him less um, because there's players like Elise and Eze, who is next on this list. So Eze side at 5.5, ended up at 5.7, so went up by 0.2. Zaha side at 7, went up to 7.2, went up by 0.2 there. Um, Eze, I think we're going to see the sort of roles reverse there. So Zaha side at 7. Eze is going to, I would think, 7, maybe 6.5. Elise will be 5.5, five, 6. It all depends whether Roy Hodgson's still there, whether these, these players are there. But Zaha, you know, they could, based on his pedigree, could start again at 7, but I think he's going to go down at 6.5 if he is still at Palace. So it's all, all a bit up in the air. But Palace midfielders, there's going to be some price hikes there for the players that we liked um, there. Um Let's have a look at the um, midfielders that, that fell in price, though. Um, so these are the ones where we could be getting some bargains. Um, and it's Chelsea. This is what I was talking about, Chelsea. The, the, this is why they're a key team. Think think Arsenal last season. They didn't... They I mean, they, they had a pretty good season the season before, but they didn't have... Um, so they were priced accordingly. Um, Chelsea, the same. They're going to be priced accordingly. You're going to see price drops here. Now, Mason Mount, rumours that Manchester United are going in for him. If that, I mean, if that doesn't sell, transpire until the end of the window, he'll be priced. And he'll be priced as a Chelsea mid. He could be priced as you know with an eye of going to Manchester United, but it's up in the air. Um, he, as he, you know, he went down spectacularly. It was eight million. I started with him, um, so I got caught out. And he ended up at 7.2. So he's not going to be eight million again. Um, so this would indicate... Seven million, I would say. I think th- I think Mason Mount's going to be seven million. Uh, if he goes to Manchester United, that makes him great. I think um, if he remains at Chelsea, which is looking unlikely, Pochettino um, could 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 be playing a lot, could rely on him. Um, but nevertheless, I think Mason Mount is a player I'm, I'm waiting to see on in terms of his form. But I think he's going to have a more attractive price. Uh, for FPL managers um, Bailey uh, Aston Villa um, he started at 5 million he dropped by 0.7 down to 4.3 wow um, he, he was in my team for periods um, uh, of, of the season um, 
Aston Villa in Europe, um, just like Brighton. Um, so that that could favour players like Bailey. He's all sort of been in and out of the side. It could be that he's more favoured for domestic competitions rather than Europe. It could be the other way around. Um, but we'll get the first few seasons to see because Aston Villa, like Newcastle, their fixtures turn sort of the five after after five, six, seven game weeks. Um, and so, you know, we've got time to to see where they're going to be. Um, could be a bargain, though. Um, he's not going to be cheap as 4.3. Um, but this does indicate it could be 4.5 in which case that would be amazing because I've seen, uh, for example, Brownhill from Burnley in many teams. Um, but just cause you know, people know of him, <laughs> um, and he's, and he's cheap, but there, there could be what I'm looking for in a 4.5 midfielder is a player like Bailey who can actually score occasionally when they're asked to, um, uh, Mudrick, uh, Chelsea, just underlining Chelsea, you know, one of the 30,000, um, midfielders at Chelsea, Started at seven based on his reputation, but it hasn't quite worked out for him and it hasn't quite worked out for Chelsea. So he ended up at 6.4, a 0.6 reduction. Um, he's going to be cheap. He's going to be cheap, but he could fit into the plans. He's a good player. Um, so, um, you know, he could be could be as low as six million. Um, could even be lower. I mean, I, some of these Chelsea mids are going to, you know, they're going to be they can't give them away. <laughs> So 5.5, 6 million is not going to be out of the, out of the, the realms of reason here. But I think for, for a player like him, 6.5 would be OK. 6 million could be could be a player to really, really go for. Um, Iwobi at uh, Everton um, is uh, the next player mentioned here. He, he had a 0. 0.6 reduction in prices. Um, and he ended the season at 4.9. The reason I mentioned here is that Everton are a mess. <laughs> um, they've got Sean Dyche, so they do have the potential for their wingers and attackers to score occasionally. They're not big scorers, though, uh, unfortunately. I do apologise if um, my mic is picking up a noise um, at the moment. The um, Someone outside uh, have the great idea to um, mow um, the patch of grass um, uh, in the uh, road I live in at the moment, but hopefully they'll finish soon. Um, anyway, Wobi. The reason I mentioned him is four point nine. I can see some price reductions for a Wobi type players, four point five. So that's what I'm looking for. Four point five players, and so they're they're quite intriguing. Um, but yeah, people are going to come away with this as thinking, "Hey Joe, why are you recommending an Everton midfielder?" I'm not necessarily. I'm just saying these prices. I'm looking at these types of players who might who might. They get consistent minutes. They've got the chance of goals. They could be 4.5 million. So it's that sort of Bailey, a Wobi type player that I'm interested in. Um, but um, yeah, um, let's move on to forwards. Um, so in terms of price rises, there's going to be a big name here. A big, big Norwegian uh, name, uh, which people will know he's going to get a price rise. Can you believe Erlen Haaland? We look back now, so cast your minds back. I mean, I can't, I haven't got the technique to do the, the wobbly screen sort of gaze, look back, look back in time, uh, flashback thing. But Haaland started the season at 11.5 million and um, he scored thousands and one goals. Uh, he went up 0.9 and ended the season at 12.4. So I think he was 12.5, 12.6 at some points. So um, he's going to be more than that because he's been such a reliable um, captain. I know the guy um, uh, that won the game actually captained him half the season. So not all the time. Well, not, not a perma captain. So perhaps some away, tricky away games. Um, he's not the guy to captain. But I think in, in general, I think 12.4. Um, that'd, be, that'd be funny if he is that. I'll have him on my team if he's 12.5 or so. Um, but I think we're looking at 13.5 would be realistic. It would start asking questions. It would start meaning that we're, you know, that's that's 2 million or so we, you know, we, we that we had last season that we won't have this season. Um, there is a precedent, though. Um, Thierry Henry uh, and Van Persie, more in my, my time of playing, Van Persie went to Manchester United, had a great season. Um, he was then, um, he was a sort of reliable captain. So then they put him up at 14 million. Um, and that was a problem um, because he didn't replicate that. Now, I'm not saying Haaland's not going to replicate that. I think there's a difference there. Haaland will, well, on paper, will do as well. We'll keep scoring. He's so young. 
Um, but the problem is for us as fantasy managers, if he is 14 million, and as uh, I think I, I discovered, many other people discovered it in that season where Van Persie was 14 million, when you're, when you're constructing your team, it's very difficult to afford other good players. Um, you certainly can't have another premium, and it's very difficult to even get to, to many of those sort of 8.5 million uh, or an expensive defender. So I, I went out, went without him. Van Persie in that 14 million ski season and did, did well because of it. And those that didn't had to had to sort of wildcard or scrabble around or use hits. And it's because there's so much money invested in Van Persie. You've got to go cheap, cheap as chips everywhere else. And so you've, your team's so unbalanced and you've got all these wonderful players each week scoring and you think, oh, how can I afford that 8 million player? And and it just becomes so much that you've got to, you've got to remove that money. Um Harlan's going to be a tricky one because he's he's you know no respect of disrespect of Van Persie he's better he's a far better player um, he's a far more reliable captaincy pick um, so he, you've got to start with him you have to start with him because those that didn't last season will tell you you will get such a rank drop because effective ownership which is adding the captaincy to the ownership to captaincy doubles the points so if 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 say Almost all, 99% of managers have Haaland and almost all 99% captain him. You're looking at nearly 200% effective ownership. So if you own him and captain him, it's immaterial. So the rest of your players, you've got to rely on for price ri- uh, for rank rises and rank falls. But if you don't own him, you've essentially got two Haalands against you. If you do not own Haaland and if you're chosen captain blanks which is possible because so many many players we pick do um harlands is going to be that's two uh, imagine that each week you've got two harlands against you but you've got to pay 13.5 to 14 million um to get that um it's what which one of those prices will depend on conversations i imagine um at uh, the hq at fpl um 14 million might put people off and they might think I can't afford 13.5 million will will get people and by put people off I mean sort of engagement with the game as well because you want to you want to get people playing the game you what you what you want them to be able to get players they want but also you know it's a game you don't want it make it too easy for them as arguably it was last season but that but that was largely because that wasn't FPL's fault that was because Arsenal weren't as good. Manchester United weren't as good the season before. So I mean, what are they meant to do? Um, you've got to go on last season's form. And that's, you know, 38 games. It's a lot of form. Um, and, and that's why we'll see those price drops with Chelsea. But Haaland, um, yeah, he's he's going to go up and he's going to ask a lot of questions of us. Um, Jesus, 8 million, I think underpriced. As soon as I saw that price, he was in my team. Um, and he was great. Um, he did drop off towards the end. Um, it became evident that Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, in FPL terms, were probably better. Um, but nevertheless, he went up. He was he started at eight million, went up point one. I, he's going to be eight point five to nine. That's 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 going to be his price range. Tony, ah, now Tony's an interesting one. He he went up point one, so he started at seven, went up, finished at seven point one. He is uh, he's got a lengthy ban uh, for uh, betting issues. Um, so we're not going to see him next this calendar year. It's going to be 2024, so within the campaign. So he's going to get a price drop because some people are going to get him in and then you always get this. You get, you know, a player can both publicly be, you know, suspended for a number of matches or break their leg or something like that and still people get them in. <laughs> so Tony's still going to be in teams. So he's going to be, he's going to come down in price. Um, so he probably, his starting price may stay at seven, it may be 7.5 and they're factoring in that the market will reduce his price. But yeah, I mean, anything less, it, I think seven is fine because what we're looking at is next January, next January, February, which I think he's back when he's back. Um, and then, um, then you can get him in because um, he's a great asset. Ferguson at Brighton is 4.5. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so he, he went he went up in price uh, to 4.6. Um, he's going to have a more of a starring role. He's a year older. He's a great player. A lot of people comparing him to Harry Kane even. Um, so I think, you know, they, they, at Brighton, you've got Undav, you've got Welbeck, uh, Pedro's just joined from, from Watford. 
and CISO um, can also play um, as a forward. Um, but I think Ferguson, at f he, he's not going to be 4.5, he's not going to be 5. I think we could be looking at um, 6 million. So I'm just going to get a sip of water. Uh, <clears throat> Um, so yeah, 4.6, he's going to be probably 6 million, could be 5.5. Um, if he's any more than six, that, that's good, given the array of strikers, um, Brighton can rely on. And next that's Mitrovic, 6.6, they went up, um, he was hampered by a ban. I think it was eight matches. Um, but whenever he played, he was good. Mostly he didn't attack anyone. <laughs> Um, and as long as he was scoring, um, it's possible he could remain at 6.5. But I think because he's so firmly established, because like, Fulham did much better um, than they were expected by many people, I think Mitrovic at seven, I think that'll be, I think we're going to see the likes of Tony Mitrovic at seven million. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Um, but let's have a look at the forwards who fell in price towards the end of the season. Okay, so you've got Neil Mapay. No one's going to go there. Um, so he went down 0.9. Good. <laughs> he was 6.5. Imagine that. Uh, in perspective, Neil Mapay was the same price as Marcus Rashford. 6.5. Ludicrous. Um, so, yeah, the market decided that was ludicrous. They they bumped up Rashford's price. His price would go up even further. Um, Everton, striker, no, just ignore them. Um, Niketia, he went down in price. I mean, cause, you know, he wasn't getting the minutes. But when he did play, he did he, he did do well for us as FPL managers. So I would say Niketia is a really good um, option if um, whoever Arsenal bring in, if they do, or if Jesus is injured, Niketia will be cheap. So if you're looking to get into that Arsenal attack, that's the thing to look out for. Uh, in actual, Leicester, sadly, Leicester no longer with us into the Champions a championship. Marshall at Manchester United. I mean, it's well publicised. Manchester United on the lookout for a striker. So, um, for me personally, I've the oh, I didn't own him last season, but the seasons I have, Marshall is really frustrating. He gets injured a lot, Ooh, annoyingly a lot. Um, but then you got likes to say Danny Ings, bit part player West Ham, but they are they are in Europa League, um, so. Um, he could be getting minutes in the domestic competition. Went down, it was 7 million, down to 6.3. So he could be 6.5, could even be 6 million. 6 million, probably, given his minutes. Um, could be a bargain when West Ham's fixtures um, turn round and if uh, Ings is favoured in domestic competitions, given um, uh, they're now tougher uh, uh, run in Europe because um, they've been so successful in Europe. But now, you know, obviously that leads to um, tougher games in Europe. Um, you got more um, at Bournemouth once again. If you're looking for bargains, um, he went down. For, he was 5.5. The market decreed that was wrong. He was 4.9. Um, if he's getting irregular starts at Bournemouth, you could be looking at a five million striker there, um, a forward rather, doing well. And, and Havertz at Chelsea, um, much maligned by FPL managers, uh, but just so happens Arsenal and Real Madrid are in for him. Um, so he might he might be leaving. Um, if he remains in. Uh, the Premier League. If he remains at Chelsea, he'll be cheap. Um, but if he goes to Arsenal, you could be. So he started at eight million, and he went down to seven point four. I think he could be very cheap. Could be seven point five, um, seven million. Now, whenever I've owned him, and whenever other people know, they'll curse his name as FPL managers. But the thing about Havertz is that Real Madrid and Arsenal—they're pretty good, and. And I'm assuming they've got pretty good people who know what they're doing in terms of recruitment. They're certainly better than Chelsea's recruitment. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming um, they they know something that we don't. Um, and so I think Havertz could be could be a potential great option um, for us. OK, so I've been through all those those price rises, the price falls at the end of the last season to give us a prediction indicator. You, you know about the competition. Do have a look at Fantasy Football Scout. Um, for that so um, now, uh, live FPL is a tool that we use a lot at, at Fantasy Football Scout they've done a thing where you can plan your teams and they've done it with predicted prices now I'm going to say I think they've been a little over <laughs> a little over it's really tough on their ones there are other other sort of predicted models out there um, where you can get slightly better teams but we'll soon see when the game launches what we can get but the ethos is there you, it's gonna. You can't. It's not gonna be like last season. It's, you're not gonna better just like lavish your team with all these wonderful players that cost six million. That's just not gonna happen. It's gonna be tough. 
So let's have a look at how tough this is. So this is my um, on budget team. Now, I hastily did that this morning. I, I guess I could have, you know, get some more, but you, you just see the gist. You can't afford much. So, <laughs> OK, um, at the beginning of last season, I started with a 4 4 because I found it quite flexible. Um, and I think this season, um, I think it could be very important because defenders are cheaper historically. And if you can get get the clean sheets right, you can get a good good options there. So ignore some of the 4.5 players I've got in here. You can pick and choose around the fixtures for them. Um, but when I also was doing the uh, one of my other roles previously with Fantasy Football Scout was to do the um, was to do the team uh, the, the the team of the week um, ahead of the deadline, um, and that was that's within a set budget. And when you had um, a number of say more expensive players you wanted to put in, you had to cut corners. And one great way of doing that was to go for a four four two. So anyway, that's that's the sort of setup I've got. This is. I think they might have overdone it with some of these prices, but they've sort of underdone it with some of them as well. So, for example, Haaland's 13.5 here. That's probably realistic, I think. Could be 14, though. Um, so I can afford, with with a 100 million budget, um, according to these price predictions, I can afford one premium defender. I can afford two good but not premium um midfielders i could afford one premium strike and i think you know that is um for those listening on the podcast it's harlan by the way <laughs> um so i'll go through this team i've got pickford and leno as my goalkeeper so pickford uh, against fulham he could go to manchester united and if he does and he's 4.5 then i think he's going to be in every team every team um alexander arnold is my expensive defender i do like to go for an expensive defender with each position if I can but I couldn't I couldn't get say Salah in midfield here um so I've got Alexander Arnold 7.5 Ben White at 5 million so I, I do like I still like the Arsenal defense uh Henry at, at Brentford I do like Brent, Brentford's fixtures not this particular first one they're playing Tottenham um but just as an indication he's the sort of 4.5 defender you can go go to and and can field some weeks I I wish I fielded him more when he was sitting on my bench towards the end of last season because he was getting assists as well Uh, Moreno at uh, Villa could be 4.5 I think he's going to be 5 million but nevertheless a Villa defender not in the first fixture but but going going through the season could be good Um, and then you've got the likes of Rashford Odegaard that could that could indeed be Saka or Martinelli Uh, but um, that's going to cost you Rashford, 9 million. Odegaard, 8.5. Saka's probably going to be 9 million. Gross. Um, I put Gross in there just as a as an example of a, of a mid-range midfielder who can get goals and assists. Gross, probably on penalties. Um, he was second in line to McAllister. McAllister, of course, gone to Liverpool. So I think Gross is going to be a great option um, uh, if he's on penalties there. Um, March as well, I think it's good. Matome is, I think it's going to be too expensive for this. Um, I've gone for um, Douglas Luiz, uh, Aston Villa. I mean, this is the indication of what else you can get. Um, see, a couple of seasons gone by, I did okay at the start of the season by having Suchek, who was five million at West Ham, and I don't know if anyone else playing then remembers this. He he did really well. He kept getting goals each week, and he was sitting on people's benches because they got him as a sort of a cheap midfielder bench fodder. But this season, I think you're going to have to field those types of players. And I did quite well by fielding them. So whilst it's not Douglas Louise, look out for five million um, midfielders. I think you can get them. Um, and, you know, could, could even be him. Um, Haaland uh, um, as a captain. <laughs> um, and uh, there'll be later content and videos. And there is a, there's an article on Fantasy Football Scout about captaincy. But yeah, Haaland is there. There's no way I'm going out without him. Whether you're captain or not, maybe another matter. But there's no way you can go without effective ownership of two Harlands and uh, uh, Mbemo at um, Brentford uh, you could go for Visser as well at Brentford um, without Tony um, they actually did well they actually got got a lot of points towards the end last season um, I not maybe their opening fixture against Tottenham although maybe um, but uh, their other fixtures are really good early on so I do like Brentford and I think you can get a good cheap Brentford attacker there um, and the bench is absolutely awful um I mean, I just I had to find two four million players. I've got um, uh, Alt Nori at West at Wolves, for example. 
Um, Archer is is a striker at uh, Villa. He won't play. Um, we might do, but chances are we'll stay on loan or, or go off or be back up to Watkins. Um, but he w- he'll be 4.5 anyway, so I probably can't even afford that. Um, so I just put him in there, um, really. But I, yeah, I mean, just because I think the pricing could be a bit... I think I think there's 4.5... Yeah, so say I'm 0.5 off. Anyway, I did it this morning. It's quite, I did it in a rush. Um, and then Brownhill at 4.5. He's going to be a popular 4.5. People have heard of him and he'll be 4.5 and he might get you attacking returns. That's what you're looking for. But as I said earlier, I think you might better get some others um, better, especially from the promoted team. Sheffield United, we know little about. But um, if you have a look on the, some of the articles on Fantasy Football Scout, you will know a little bit more about them. Um, we're going to have some content on the promoted teams as well. Uh, Burnley and, and uh, well, obviously with Brownhill here, but Luton as well. You might get some might get some bargains. Uh, and I've gone for two 4.5s. Um, you could get a five-point um, uh, goalkeeper and a four million one. But I like to have a bit of a choice early on just in case. Because I always start from proviso when I start a season, I'm wrong. How can I get out of this mess? And that's... Um, yeah, Leno is how I get out of the out of my Pickford mess, for example. Um, so this is the team. Okay, here's so that's what I probably can afford. It's not great, is it? It's rubbish. I mean, I'd, I'd be really sad if I had that start with this, this team. Um, this is what I want. Um, not completely what I want, but I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> um, but you can look, I've got money remaining. I'm minus sixteen point five. <laughs> I'm sixteen and a half million short of this but even if the price predictions are slightly off say 0.5 off or million off you're going to get um this there's obviously obviously you're not going to afford this team so this is the team you can't afford um and you will not better afford i can i can safely predict this is totally unaffordable but it was this is sort of the team that was affordable towards the end of last season uh, Raya in goal, wherever he ends up. Alexander Arnold, you can afford him with this. Uh, well, you can't. It's 16.5 million short. Trippier, you can get him. 6.5. White, 5 million. Well, a defence. You can't get it. Um, Rashford and Saka, both 9 million. Can't afford them. Um, Odegaard, 8.5 million. Wouldn't be good to have two Arsenal midfielders with a great start they've got. But Toma at 7, he's gone up in price. Who cares? Um, but you will care because you will not be able to afford him. This is sort of, these are the players you want to get. Um, Bomo uh, at Brentford. I'm still I've got, I'm still on this sort of thing about Brentford attackers. We're seeing pre-season, but I do like their start. I think we're going to get some value there. Harland, uh, good captain, and Kane. I've got in as well. Twelve point five. <coughs> see, this is this is sixteen point five million over. So even if you take, so you say, oh Joe, look, what you've done. You can't have Harland and Kane, or or for example, Salah instead of Saka, something like that. Um, okay, we'll shave off six and a half million. You're still ten million over. So you're still wow, it's so over, it's unbelievable. Uh, and then on my bench, well, I can afford to have uh, Henry at Brentford, Moreno at Villa. Obviously, Brownhill's got to go there, the 4.5 midfielder of choice. Um, uh, and then Leno as a, as a backup. So I can afford a 4.5, although I can't afford it. So I think, you know, what this shows is what you can't get. What you can get is not going to be so great. Um, but it all depends on FPL price set. You know, they don't want to put people off, do they? Um, I mean, there's people like me who've been playing for over a decade. I'm not going to be put off. Um, but other people might be if it's if the pricing's a bit um, just too much. So I think there will be a bit of leeway. So hopefully some of these prices won't be quite as high as we think. Um, and hopefully there'll be lots of good bargains um, for us. Um, so um, I, hope, I hope that's been of use to you. Um, the price, the when the game launches, we'll know all the prices as well. So, um, but hopefully uh, a bit of fun uh, to predict these things. And also you can win some membership as well. So do do check out that competition on fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. And also do remember to like the video if you enjoyed this content. Um, and also subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with videos like this um, and all our regular videos throughout the season as well. Good luck with the season. <coughs> My voice is starting to go on account. I, I appear to have been talking for 54 minutes, um, but good luck for the season. See you soon. Take care. And uh, let's hope let's hope some of those prices are kind to us next season. See you soon. <laughs>